Halloween. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the fourth episode of the Registered Nerd Podcast. Um, today, our topic of discussion is going to be horror films. I feel like it would be irresponsible for us to not talk about it during the month of October. Uh, with me today is, uh, of course, Sparks and Webbed. And then we have a newcomer, Kevin. Say hello, Kevin. Hello. Hi, and Kevin. <laughs> And of course, I'm Snack Packs, and uh, with that, let's get right into it, um, guys. Uh, let's let's talk about uh, horror movies. Uh, what what would you guys say is your absolute favorite horror movie? Oh, I I have to go with Evil Dead, and I kind of count Evil Dead one and two together because they're kind of the same movie. One's yeah. a little bit funnier, and one's a little bit takes itself a little more seriously. But there's so many, I don't know, but I, I think I have a special place in my heart for Evil Dead. Well, like, doesn't doesn't Evil Dead 2 just kind of, like, rehash the first one and just kind of retcon some things? Evil Dead, the, the first 30 minutes of Evil Dead really compresses um, Evil Dead 1. It basically tells the entire story with a smaller cast, because it's just him and his girlfriend at the cabin instead of, like, their friends and his sister. Oh, and God. then um, yes. every everything after that is a continuation of the story, um, it's, which is a very bizarre decision. It's like let's remake the movie, but let's. I, I've never seen somebody do that. It, it was kind of and and I think they went. I think they realized how many people liked the campiness of it in the first one, and so they just went full camp in the second one, which is great. I mean, it, it's the the second one is completely hilarious and just plays up Bruce Campbell's face. Right. He mugs for the camera through like ninety percent of that movie, and it's it's amazing. I love it. I can yeah. watch that movie anytime. That's a good Halloween movie. Uh, I remember watching that first one. I ne- I had never seen it uh, up until probably, oh god, after we became friends. I had never seen it before. Really? Was yeah. that? Did I introduce you to it? Did well, I make you? Watch I mean, it? I, I was aware of it. I just never watched yeah. it, and then we watched it at uh, one of the Halloween movie nights that we had, and. Uh, it was actually the first we, one's actually pretty creepy. It is. It's uh, well when I first saw it. Um, so if if anybody doesn't know, uh, we all live in Michigan, and uh, we live around like suburban Detroit, kind of on the outskirts. And I had a friend in high school. Her parents were loaded. Her dad was some sort of engineer. They lived in like a million dollar house out in the middle of nowhere, just woods around it. And she had her own like loft area. She had a pool table, a big screen TV. This was like two thousand two, back when nobody had a big screen TV, like especially not a high schooler and um big leather couches up there and so we'd go over and watch horror movies and then you'd have to go outside get in your car drive on a dirt road for 20 minutes to get home and stuff and it was just creepy as fuck so it was a great place to watch scary movies and that's where we were introduced to evil dead someone's like oh i heard this movie's freaking crazy and uh they were not wrong when did the first one come out uh oh my god um late that's a good question. 80s, I think. Um, I'm actually not sure. Bruce Campbell was pretty young. Um, and another reason that movie has a special place in my heart is like Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi. They're both from Michigan. They uh, they went to Michigan State. Bruce Campbell actually grew up right down the road from me in Royal Oak. Um, and so there's a lot of like everybody's wearing like Michigan State gear in the movie. And I don't know. It's kind of kind of special in that way. But yeah, that movie that movie opens up in like the most bizarre way. His friend, uh, I forget, I forget his friend's name in that movie. But the there's two guys and three girls. One of the girls is Bruce's. Um, his name is Ashley in the movie, and Ashley's sister, and Ashley's girlfriend, and then his buddy and his girlfriend. And his buddy in that movie is the biggest fucking asshole of any character I've he, ever seen. He really is. Film. He's such a dick. Like. There's a, there's a scene early on, like, they get to the cabin, and he's already done some things that are really dickish at this point. And they're sitting around, and they hear a noise from in the cellar underneath, and it's really kind of creepy, and they're all, like, standing looking down. And one of the girls goes, 
oh, it must be an animal or something, which is a pretty reasonable thing to say. I mean, you're in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. You're hearing noise from the root cellar. And he just looks at her and he goes, an animal? An animal? Like in the most mocking way possible. And it's like, well, what the fuck do you think it is? Like, that's reasonable. I mean, it, she turns out to be wrong. It's a, it's a demon that murders them all. But, <laughs> you know. Um, and I had... I, I love predicting things in movies and in um, evil dead. We were all sitting there. It, it's me and like seven of my high school friends. It was like, it was like five girls and there were like two of us guys and we're watching this movie. And at this point we're all just like amazed at how ridiculous it is. And just, we're like, is this really happening? And Ash's sister runs out into the woods and I go, she's going to get raped by a tree or something. And five minutes later, that poor character gets sexually assaulted by a tree. And and I'm like, all right, this movie's completely off the rails. Like, this is insane. Like, they were on LSD when they made it. Um, and it just gets crazier and crazier from there. And I don't know. It's it's just very special because it was so low budget. And they still, they, like, kind of took it seriously. But they just had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Um, I... D- you... You saw the remake. Did we see the remake together? We did. Yeah, we did uh, a couple of years ago. And and that was an okay. I thought it was a so, decent movie. Yeah, that took itself very seriously. That kind of yeah. lost most of the camp, but it did have some really like grotesque imagery. I remember the one girl in the bathroom, she like cuts her jaw off with like a piece of broken glass or something. Um, Kevin, you saw it, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. There, there's Evil Dead is getting kind of um, like this big universe because you've got you've got evil dead you have evil dead 2 you have army of darkness which is evil dead 3 and that's where shit goes completely off the rails it's a time travel movie makes no sense but it's still awesome in its way that's probably the one i've seen the least i think i've only watched that one a few times and um and then you've got the series and then you've got the remake and i don't know have any of you guys watched the series no I watched no. the first couple episodes of Ash vs. Evil Dead. The series gets really good. Um, it's got uh, the actress that played Xena Warrior Princess. I always forget her name. Um, and I, again, that one's supposed to take place in Michigan. They name drop a lot of areas in Michigan. Of course, they filmed it in New Zealand because New Zealand looks just like Michigan. Um, you know, if, when I when I watch The Lord of the Rings, I think, yep, yep, Southeast Michigan. But um yeah, no, in, there's a great scene in the second season of the show where he's in a morgue and he's trying to find um, he's trying to find a book. And I think he's the Necronomicon he's trying to find. And one of the dead bodies comes to life and its intestines are coming out and like strangling him. And the intestines actually like pull his head up into the dead body's asshole and just like before it happens, he's like, no, no, no. And he just gets pulled up into this huge dead body's butt. And it's like, I can't believe, even even for stars, I think it plays on stars or Showtime or something. I think uh, it's only. Stars. Yeah, I, I can't believe they got away with filming that. Like, I, 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 I can just imagine reading the script and be like, and then Ash's head is pulled into the rectum, and like the, <laughs> the balls and the dick are there, just like right in front of his face, and it's just, it's just brutal. It's disgusting and horrific at the same time. That's but... uh... <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I, uh... yeah, I, 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 <clears throat> I would say that they're. It's a pretty, pretty good series of movies. I, I, I have yet to see Army of Darkness, but I have seen. Evil Dead. Oh, we gotta watch Army of Darkness. And uh, Army of Darkness goes full. Army of Darkness goes full retard. He's back in like um he gets time traveled back to the Middle East, and they have this prophecy where he's gonna save them. And at first they try to kill him. They throw him down a well that's populated with demons, and he kills all the demons. And then they're like, "Oh, you must be the savior." And he goes on this quest, and he completely fucks it up. <laughs> like I don't know. It's it's a pretty ridiculous movie. I, I wouldn't even call that one a horror movie, although it does have some pretty good special effects and some of the zombies are in it. But when the zombies are attacking, they're full on like camp, like how if you were like if you were pretending to scare a little kid, like how you would act, that's how the monsters act in Army of Darkness. Right. Um But yeah, there's a great scene where Ash actually um where Ash actually uh, splits into two and that's a pretty disgusting disgusting scene. Hmm. But yeah, so that's I think that's my favorite, even though it's a little campy. I do love those movies. I can understand that. What about you, Nick? Or uh, 
Kevin? What? Uh... Uh, I'd have to say, what's it called? Don't breathe. Don't breathe. Yeah. No, that's, I've not that's seen that one. That's an interesting choice. Um, that's pretty. That's a pretty recent movie too. Oh, that was the one where they can't make noise, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. The aliens will find them. No. <laughs> the aliens no, is that not it? No, that was the one with uh, <laughs> Jim Halpert or whatever. Am I thinking of a different that movie that you're thinking of? But I just forget what that. That's the quiet place. The quiet oh, place. Yeah. no, you're talking about the one that was set in Detroit where they're going to rob the guy. Right, mm -hmm. that one. I was and, completely and on a different track. And he's blind. That was a totally different movie, and he's blind. Okay, well, Tom, these aliens were blind, to did my you, did you see? Did you see Don't Breathe? Me? Yeah. No, I, I heard a lot about it. I, that was uh, an interesting, it, it took an interesting path. Like at well, first, tell us about it. Well, at first, it takes like you know, it, it starts off they're breaking into the the breaking into this guy's house. He's blind, whatever. You think it's gonna just be like the standard horror movie where you're like, and you're like, how can this how can this movie be this long, and 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 keep my attention? But it actually is pretty good with the in terms of keeping you keeping you involved. Um, it's pretty tense. You know, they're trying to get away from him, and he's, he knows the house even though he's blind. He can hear their footsteps and whatever. He's like fucking Daredevil. Uh, but it gets really and he's fucking... A, he's a bad guy, right? Yes, he is a bad guy. See, um, his... They reveal okay, it. Talk about spoilers. Yeah, spoilers for anyone who hasn't Because this seen movie's it. fairly new, so... Yeah, the whole story is that his daughter was uh, killed in a drunk driving accident. And, as they often are well yeah and uh so he has this woman i think I, I it's been a while since i've seen it but i think it was the woman that actually hit and killed her daughter or his daughter and uh okay he's got her locked in the basement and he's impregnated her to like give him a new child and, I mean that just sounds practical, you well, know. Well, and, I mean, and and then, I mean that's what I do with with all of my female, you know. Um, <laughs> that's um, what you have that big basement for. That's what you I know? have the big basement for, yeah. You know, just otherwise you're just wasting all that space. But it, it's it's so it's so nasty because like what happens is, is like so he he goes down there in the basement to chase after the girl that's down there. So this girl's trying to set this this woman free that she found, and. They open up the basement door because it's got one of those. It's one of those Michigan basements that like opens, uh, you know, like for a tornado shelter kind of thing. Like a cellar. Like a cellar. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he, she opens up the door and he sh he sh he fires into the basement thinking he's shooting at the girl, but he ends up killing the pregnant chick. So then he takes the oh. girl captive and tries to impregnate her, and then like that's like the next half of the movie is her trying to escape. Oh jeez, and it's really disgusting because he it's... like has frozen sperm in his like uh, in his uh, freezer. He heats it up, he puts it in, he puts it in a turkey baster, and tries and like has her up in like stirrups and shit. It's oh jeez, yeah, it's a pretty fucked up movie. Um, it's kind of it's... interesting that our first two movies have like a Michigan connection. Yeah, but I mean, what else? Well, I I kind of took over that, Kevin. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. what, what else what else uh i was just gonna say it's it's really intense it is very intense movie um if you it guys sounds have like chance, it I, if you have a chance to watch it it's it's good i'll have to check that one out um, um yeah yeah it was it was on my list but like i said i don't i don't see a lot of horror in theaters um basically snacks if i don't go see it with you i i don't see it with anyone because my wife isn't really into horror like she'll she'll watch a horror movie with me every once in a while it's weird her mom my mother-in-law is insanely into horror movies and it doesn't matter what like she um where they get the net netflix still where they get them in the mail and like she'll always have a couple of them sitting there and, and it'll be these like low budget really like terrible slasher films and things i've never heard about like alien films monster films and she's mm -hmm. like yeah when nobody else is here i just like watch them by myself i was like who are you she's like the sweetest like middle-aged woman and she's <laughs> she's at home watching like you know grindhouse horror films <laughs> it's very strange uh what about you webbed well, yeah webbed i'm not really a horror connoisseur 
but um, I mean, I'll watch them with other people, mainly uh, you, Snacks, when uh, I'm hanging out with you and you're in the mood for a horror movie. But um, you know what? I, I do like it's like the the horror movies that are like the horror comedy movies. Like those aren't bad. Oh, you mean like uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Tucker you, and Dale you know what? One came to mind that I got surprised by is I forget who I went and even saw this with in the theaters, but someone like dragged me along to a movie, and uh, it was that Cabin in the Woods movie. That was me. I dragged you along to that. Was yeah. it you? Yeah. I didn't even realize yeah. it was going to be like a horror comedy movie. Yeah. When we went and saw it, I thought it was going to be like the legit horror movie, and then we're watching it, and it's like, what the fuck is happening here? Like. Oh, okay. Now I see. What yeah, it, it, that that, that movie had an interesting development cycle. That that's a Joss Whedon film. Well, and, the thing uh, is, is that that movie. Uh, I am not a person who uh, ever is like worried about spoilers, but that is one movie that anybody who goes to watches it should watch it spoiler free. It just yeah, makes you, that's what we're, makes we're the gonna movie. we're gonna talk about this movie for a second. So, um, if you if you haven't if you have not seen. Uh, cabin in the woods which we all highly recommend i think um skip to this time code which we probably won't put in yeah that was um, actually pretty good it well here's the thing the development of that movie was weird because it was a joss whedon film and it's got chris hemsworth in it and they kind of they made it and they didn't really know what to do with it like nobody really wanted to release it like nobody had faith in it they're like what is this movie i feel like all these like like hollywood you know all these uh distribution companies were all probably like staring at it poking it with a stick and being like is this a horror movie? Is it a comedy? Is like, are people actually going to like this? And um, once Chris Hemsworth got big playing Thor, um, they decided that it was worth releasing. And it, it absolutely was. So the big spoiler of that is obviously like, it's uh, all a government project and all, all the countries of the world, we have to sacrifice children or teens every year to the, these ancient gods. And we have to do it using the mythology of like our nation's horror. So they go and they have to choose, like they go to the cabin and they all go down in the cellar and there's all these, like there's like a conch shell and there's like this diary and there's all these like creepy items, like dolls and stuff in the basement. It's the first one that somebody like interacts with becomes the monster that's going to kill them. So there's this government organization that's like NASA control underneath this cabin. And it, the, the best part, that's the best part of the movie, I think, is those guys and just seeing them like this is just their office job that they come in. Right. Yeah. They're, they're all super competitive with the other com- countries. They're like, oh, Japan has 100 percent success rate and America's like number two with like 95 percent. And so there's big competition there. And then they have a board that's like, they all bet on what monster. And the one guy just wants to see a mermaid. So he bets mermaid every year. And it's never the fucking mermaid. And at the end of the movie, so this is this is spoilers too. At the end of the movie, shit gets crazy. The kids find their way down to the facility. They let out the monsters. Like basically it's the end of the world. And the one guy is like crawling through all the debris and blood and bodies. And in front of him is the mermaid. And the mermaid is like this really grotesque, like fish man monster with this giant head. And he's like, you got to be fucking kidding me. And it bites his head off. And then blood just comes flying out of its blowhole. I'll, I'll never forget that. That's a scene that stays with you. Yeah, it was, it was a good, it was, I, I really enjoyed that movie. Speaking of which, I should probably get it on Blu-ray. Cause I don't know. Yeah. That would be one worth having for sure. Like, um, and, and as much as I love that movie, and it it is a good movie, I prefer Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. I think Tucker and Dale vs. Evil is like, all of these movies pay a lot of homage to Evil Dead, too. The cabins in both films look just like the cabin in Evil Dead. Did you guys see... Um, yeah, that's what I kind of figured. Did yeah. you guys see uh, Little Evil? I did not. No. no. Yeah, it was. it's a comedy movie. It's got Adam Scott in it, and he... Oh, it, he marries... God, I can't remember what the what the actress's name is. She's the girl from Lost. And uh, Ant Man, there's a lot of girls. The girl that was an Ant Man, yeah, yeah, her. Evangeline and, uh, Lily. Yeah, and uh, her son is like literally the the son of Satan. And yes, uh, yeah, yeah, I I did see that. It was it was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that was I. I, I think I might have seen that with you, actually. Yeah, I don't remember a lot from it, but I do remember that was kind of a good movie. I completely forgot. Yeah. Um, well, in, in Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, um, what's so great about that movie is it turns everything on its head where the, the hillbillies are 
the good guys. Like they're just two sweet, nice guys. Like that they they want to go out and fish and like they bought this cabin and they want to fix it up. And then um, the college kids through through a series of misunderstandings, the college kids that are like camping across the lake uh, think that they're evil and trying to kill them. And so they try to kill the hillbillies first. And in the process, like a guy trips and falls and goes face first into a stump grinder and just like a- another guy's running away from them. And, and he like runs into a stick and impales himself in the woods. Like they just take themselves out one after another. And it turns out that one of them, one of the college kids is actually like kind of crazy and kind of a killer. And this all kind of triggers him. And uh, they end up the, the hillbillies have to battle him at the end to save the girl, and it's just like the third act. I don't love because it starts to be not quite so funny in the third act, and it yeah. just becomes them versus him. But I mean, it's it's still good. Like the first two acts are amazing. Like that kid, that that moment when that kid just fucking like face plants into the stump grinder. And yeah. the guy who's grinding stumps, he like turns around and just sees a body in there, and he, he tries to like pull him out. <laughs> and finally, the thing like jams up on his body, and he's literally just holding like two legs, and the rest of it's just blood. <laughs> and he's like, "Are you okay?" I like um, I like <laughs> the part horrible. I like the part where he's uh, sawing into the log, and it's there's a bee's nest in the log. Yeah, yeah. And then he starts running with the chainsaw. With the chainsaw. And the the one kid thinks he's chasing after him. Yeah. <laughs> and like oh, after that, he impales himself on the tree, and then he's like, "Wow, he was really afraid of bees." <laughs> well, <laughs> they have, yeah, they have this moment where because at this point he doesn't know the kids are out. They have chains, and he looks over because they're like almost parallel with each other, and he's running like a lunatic with the chainsaw. And he looks over, and him and the kid lock eyes. And look like who the hell is this person like where did he come from and then he keeps running and the kid looks forward and that's when he impales himself no that movie is uh highly recommended it is absolutely hilarious um you did you saw a cabin in the woods right kevin oh yeah okay, never forget I was, it i was gonna say I, I i hope we didn't spoil it for you no no no. that i'll never forget that scene where all the elevator doors open oh yeah that's great oh stick oh. with me is, is that where the all the monsters come into the facility? Is that what you're talking mm-hmm. about? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. No. yeah that's like, a... That kind of horror type film, I guess, is is what I'm more into. I, I don't get into like the straight horror movies where they're well, just trying to take it too seriously. Right. I, well, what's so great about those films is you can have like you can have a bunch of people over and have a party and you can all watch it and like you don't have to take it super seriously. Like it's great for Halloween parties and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas something that's more intense and like slower pace, like you can't really watch like alien or something like that with a big group of people. Cause it breaks down because people who haven't seen it, don't pay attention. People who have end up talking about stuff. And it's, it's not like you don't watch that movie for fun. You watch that movie to kind of like for the intensity of it. Right. Um, but that's kind of why I don't necessarily enjoy those movies is because I don't really enjoy watching those by myself. Um, and my wife's really not into horror movies either. So it's not like I have someone who I'm with who's like, I want to watch horror, watch it with me. And I'm like, right. Okay, or something. So, <clears throat> and then it, when there's gatherings, like I, yeah, the more likely thing to be on the TV would, around this time of year would be like a comedy horror movie you know mm-hmm. right right and right. i would do that i would watch that with you guys or something if we were all together like cabin in the woods or something like that kevin and i have I, seen a lot of a lot of the more modern horror movies that have come out in the last year or two i mean like yeah, see, I, the halloween I, I movies the halloween movies like to watch as a group or something to and kind of make fun of just how silly it kind of is you know yeah, is, yeah. that's that i don't mind either but again i'm not going to watch that by myself i'd watch it with you guys or something right i remember i love halloween it's one of my favorite holidays like i in elementary school you know i i grew up in royal oak which is there's just houses everywhere they're all really close together so it's a great place to go trick-or-treating because you can hit like just street after street after street and my dad would always take me and my friends out and but afterwards i have like traditional halloween movies that i have to watch every year and um one of them is the uh sleepy hollow not the movie um not the live action movie but the disney um cartoon uh really? with the head- yeah with the headless horseman because they used to play that on the disney channel every halloween so we actually i think i have it on vhs but i i watch that every halloween wow. and um i also watch the scene from fantasia 
where the all the demons and the devil come out. We we used to always watch that on Halloween too, so I always make sure I, I make a point of watching that. Um, do you know which one I'm talking about? I do know which one you're talking about. Yeah, that that as a kid, see, as a kid, those things always creeped me out so much, but like it's tradition, so I have to watch them. Yeah. Um, and then you know what? Uh, the two shows when I was a kid that had excellent Halloween episodes were Roseanne and Married with Children. Like huh. Roseanne, R- Roseanne would always go all in on their horror episodes, and then Married with Children would too. And well, Roseanne uh, died, so. Yeah. Yeah, they killed they killed Roseanne, and nobody's watching the show Do you now. Know so. How they killed her off, though? Uh, I think overdose of her drugs, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, opioid I mean, overdose. Well, that's the easy thing to do because her character was struggling with a uh, with opioid addiction in the show, so it was like, all right. But yeah, I heard they got like, like they said the ratings were still good, but they got like half of the ratings of, that the show was getting when she was in it. It's not going to last. No one's going to watch Roseanne without Roseanne. No, I mean, they won't. It's but side note, so. Yeah, it's okay. It's related. You know that whole situation. Was kind I, of I just want to know if you knew how she died. <laughs> yeah, I knew. I heard. I didn't watch the show, but I heard. So, so we talked about some. Actually, if we're still talking about uh, comedy horror movies, I have a special place in my heart too for Scary Movie One and Two. <laughs> like those those movies really get terrible after the Wayne's Brothers left, but Scary Movie One and Two are amazing. However, I really like Three and Four. Not because Cause Leslie, Nielsen. Cause Leslie Nielsen is in it, and I love yeah. Leslie Nielsen. He's uh... Leslie Nielsen's a, a gem, a, a treasure, and really? everything. Yeah. But but the first two are just the thing I like about the first two is they actually have a story. The first one is kind of a, a parody of Scream, and the second one is kind of a parody of like The Exorcist, and like there there's a couple movies, but they both actually have a cohesive plot that all of the comedy kind of hangs off of. A, right. The other the other three kind of seem to me like they were. I think there have been five of them. The other ones seem to me like, oh, it's just, we'll make a joke about the ring or we'll make a joke about this. And it doesn't really, like, there's no cohesive story through the whole thing. Right. Yeah, well, um, as for me, God, I I would have trouble picking an absolute favorite. Um, uh, my, my, my holy trinity would be uh, Halloween, Alien, and The Thing. Yeah, which are all great. They're I mean, all th- great horror movies. I think, I think Alien is the perfect, like, ten little Indians style story where they're like characters are just getting picked off and there's nothing they can do about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is, is like on a whole different level though, because the thing is like apocalyptic, and the thing is really, which which do you want to talk about first? Because I'm sure we have a lot we can say about both of these. Well, um. Let's uh, let's talk about Alien first, then we'll get into the thing and then talk about Halloween, because I also kind of want to talk a little bit about the, the new one, because I did just see it. Yeah, the new Halloween. Okay. Um, so, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, the, the great thing about Alien, I mean, there's so much that's good. Number one, people, I, I would have liked to have seen that movie when it came out. I wasn't born, but people didn't know Sigourney Weaver was the main hero. She was not one of the known actors in the film like she was you know you start to watch that movie and you think that um the captain is going to be the the right you think you think dallas is the the protagonist (laughs) and then then dallas dies to jazz hands in one of the in one of the only scenes in the movie that's a little bit silly um and as it goes on it starts to whittle down and you're like you start to realize oh she's the hero you know and and this is another thing you know there's been a lot of talk lately about oh we need we like movies fail because they have a strong female character and like men and nerds don't want to watch that and it's like uh, ripley everybody loves ripley you ever heard like, of the, this uh, is... you ever hear of uh sarah connor i mean yeah uh the bride you know it's like there's there's tons of examples of of strong female characters that people love but they're they're good characters and they're in good films and, and they're not just like a mary sue character i mean ripley Ripley struggles with a lot in that movie. She doesn't necessarily have the respect of her tr- of her crew at first. Um, she she does seem the, like the one that has her head on the shoulders. Like she seems the one that cares the most about like crew welfare. <laughs> well, and, and and the funny thing is, is that if you're watching it for the first time, obviously you know we know that she's the the main protagonist because we've seen, you know there's the scenes right. with her or whatever. But like, but you if wouldn't you were watching it, it. Like you're like, God, this bitch is just so like she's so uptight, like. Yeah. If you're watching the movie, you're like, God damn. 
and then you find out like and, maybe yeah. maybe in space you should be a little uptight because right. things are really dangerous um but yeah that scene i mean it's obviously one of the most famous scenes in all of cinema where um the chest burster you know where they're all eating and and that that movie has such organic dialogue too the way everybody talks like it feels like a bunch of friends having a conversation right and then and you kind of forget for a little bit it's like okay like you know something's up with him he had that thing on his face and then right. that scene happens and you're just like there's this there's a silence after like everyone screams you know and and that one actress um not sigourney weaver but the other one uh, looks like she's going to have a full-on panic attack, and I guess that was real. They said like when the she didn't realize how like grotesque the special effect was going to be, and she got splattered with a lot more blood than she thought she was going to get hit by, and um, she really did kind of. They had to they had to like stop shooting for a little bit and get everybody calmed down, and that comes through perfectly in that scene. And um, after it happens, after it runs away, and his body is just on the table, there's just this like moment of silence. And, I, and it, it right. feels so realistic where, like, everyone's literally just in shock and, and doesn't know. Their brain can't compute what just happened. And it's right. like, yeah, that's how, that's how you would feel if you were at dinner and that happened, you know? You did see, I know Kevin, Kevin's the youngest out of all of us, so you saw the original Alien, right? I thought you said you Me? watched it. Yeah, I thought you said you watched it before we saw Covenant because I know we saw Covenant. Together. Kevin's Kevin's not paying attention to this. He's only half in game. I I I might have seen it. Playing, I don't remember. Fortnite in the background. I am not. No. <laughs> he's that age. He looks like a Fortnite player. If you're trying to picture Kevin. Hey, we we him and I both play Fortnite, so just. <laughs> yeah, but he looks like a Fortnite player. Um, you you said you haven't seen the original Alien. I have not. I don't. I don't think I have. I don't remember. Snacks, to be snacks, honest, what are, you, what are you doing? I might have a long time ago. I don't know. I don't know. I tried well, to raise him right, but I will tell you if you've seen it like on television that edit. Oh, Justice. Yeah, that's... You got to watch know. it on Blu-ray. Yeah. I think does it on? I think it's on HBO. Uh, Probably. It is. Usually. I think. I, I it's, believe. It's I believe, always uh, on. One, one I believe one, two, services. and three are on HBO as well as Covenant. In Covenant, but I've seen that one. Here's well, my don't... issue with Alien. How does the alien grow so fucking big so fast after bursting out of people's chests? That's... Is is there an explained reason why no. that happens? There no. you go. Okay. Um. Yeah. The that's one of. I mean, if you're looking at it really from a plot point of view, that would be the only place I down a little bit. And I mean, it's possible. Like, it was smart enough. It got into their stores. Like, maybe it did. You know, maybe it found one of the pantries i don't know like it's okay, a big but even ship. if you like so if you just wolf down a bunch of food like you don't just grow from like age eight well, to like a fully grown male i think um well i think that's part of the point of it it's supposed to have like an insanely fast metabolism um which is why it continuously eats and hunts and stuff like that i mean and, and we find out later there's a little pond but i think they had this idea from the beginning because you remember when they found the eggs the eggs were in a bomber like that yeah. wasn't that that alien ship wasn't just a cargo ship. Those those were obviously lined up to be dropped on a population. So I always assumed, even from the beginning, that like the xenomorphs were a biological weapon that were designed to wipe out a population. And then like now the question becomes, it, where where that falls down in the second movie is what were they eating in the second movie after they ate all the colonists? Because there was like nothing on that planet, and there were hundreds of them. So it's like maybe they can go into a resting state. Maybe they can kind of hibernate between um, when they're feeding. But I don't know because I'm not an alien expert. I mean, I've seen a lot of the aliens. Uh, yeah. well, it, it pretty much in their entirety, but like most, some of them only once. And yeah. I mean, again, if you want to really be nitpicky, then if they have a really fast metabolism, like wouldn't you just fucking die then if you run out of food? Like so, yeah, maybe and they have. A... And that's what I wonder is like maybe they can hibernate, but. Are they? Like, what's their lifespan? Are they supposed to just like, like attack and eat and kill until they die? Like shortly well, they, after. I I okay. would imagine they call them like the perfect organism, so I'd imagine well, they'd be able to live for a really long time. Well, and one of the things is that like the eggs obviously survived for a long time. Right. Yeah, but you things survive in eggs even on our planet for yeah. long periods of time too. And they they might have been in a stasis field. The problem is like the alien is a very if you look at the. Cow 
worlds and everything. That's a really expansive universe, and I mean, right. there are going to be things that are contradict, but that's, yeah. that's just the way it is. Now, here's my other question. As far as the the plane or, or the, the alien ship that they find the eggs the on that. With the engineer, yeah. yeah. Who's, um, it's one of the engineers, it's one of their ships. Yeah, yeah they, okay. find, they find his body on it. So, I, I never really, I haven't seen the last couple aliens, I don't think. I, I don't, I don't when I say we... I've seen the aliens, I've seen like the original like four yeah. or five or whatever, you know. Um, the the engineers, what are they and like were they planning on like bombing people with those eggs in order to okay. like well, that was the thing, is that experiment? We, we we originally were thinking that that was the path that they were gonna take, and then I'm they not retconned sure that they retconned that and 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 it's basically instead of saying that the aliens were engineered by the the engineers apparently they were made by david yeah it's it, i i don't <laughs> i i don't really when when i think about alien and alien stuff i don't really look at prometheus and because prometheus was supposed to be its own series and the um what i forget what company they released under paramount or whatever said oh well you're you know you might as well just make this a prequel to the alien movie it'll draw in more fans and it's like so then they had to retcon all this stuff in and then when they did um alien covenant there was more of that so i don't really I, you can put that in the mythology but when i think about when i think about it i look at what was shown in alien and aliens and it it seemed to me like that ship was a was a bomber that was going to drop a biological weapon on a population it got shot right. down whatever war they were in it it got shot down damaged it crashed on that planet and there it sat for you know thousands tens of thousands of years until the next one found why it. was the signal that they heard a warning signal was that like warning other engineers that there's like probably. alien bags on board or something or well what? It, it was it was probably just some sort of distress signal. i don't remember exactly what the signal said did they ever decode it i thought it was she, just a all, yeah they all, decoded well, they, part they, of it they, they, they decode, that yeah. said like you know danger or something yeah well it, it says what the danger was yeah, well, it's... I mean, I I feel like if if you know we had I a bomber, could be rusty on it because I right. Seen it but I mean, if if we had a bomber go down, it was loaded ordnance. Well, people, like walking Ripley, up to it. Either. Ripley says, like she's like, I don't think it's a distress signal. She says, I think it's a warning signal, and that's pretty much all yeah to stay away. It. So yeah, oh, I, mean, okay. I mean, which which would make sense. I mean, if you if you. If you well, were like gonna crash and die, it as like the ship is saying we're in danger, whereas she's saying like no, I think it's saying like don't enter. You're in danger if you enter or something like that or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Now here's the other thing with aliens. Did with the ret counting and all the shit that's going on, like yeah. I, I still don't understand exactly what the engineers were. Um, that's probably the engineers. It sounds like they're the engineers were like a race that kind of seeded the galaxy. See, here's the thing: we don't really know either. Prometheus did such a shit job of explaining anything. Yeah, I saw but, Prometheus, and I, that's what I kind of yeah. gathered is they're like See, a they're like a master race that used to well, exist or something well, kind of a thing. In, in my internal head canon, see, in the first movie, they drop an engineer off at Earth. He drinks some of the black goo. He gets like turned into black goo. He falls into a stream, and it was kind of like, oh, life was created on Earth. And I kind of looked at it as what would have been interesting to me would have been if there was. Like the engineers had like maybe a religious sect that was really like, oh, we need to spread life everywhere, and like they're willing to like, oh, if we drink this stuff, it'll it, it'll basically like seed life on these planets, and we'll sacrifice ourselves. And then later, when like the the bigger civilization found that the sect was like doing that all over the galaxy, they were like, oh, we need we need to wipe out all of that creation because it's like blasphemous or whatever. That's so the, that was my internal. So no more. So their solution to that. Um. Yeah. And then yeah, and if you well, well wait but wait but there I don't know because like that's the other thing too is when you um when you watch Prometheus I kind of looked at that base that they land because that's not the engineer's home planet in Prometheus it's like a, basically a weapons testing facility a biological weapons testing facility that they land on so that was my other thing is maybe because they asked the question is like why would they create us just to kill us and in my head canon I'm like well, maybe there's a faction that thinks this is blasphemous to create life and this other faction that wants to create life. And this is like their version of Al-Qaeda that they've got this like remote yeah. weapons testing facility. The weapons got out. And then when the Prometheus crew lands there, that's when like they get exposed to all the stuff and that starts to create the Xenomorph. So now is, is all of that what Ridley Scott was thinking 
uh, who knows? I have no right. idea. To me, that would make be that now, yeah. is, like, the Alien versus Predator stuff, like, no nope. canon, or is that no, just... No, no that's just for I've fun. Seen, it's, it's, like, it. Alien versus Batman and stuff. It's yeah, because they made it seem like in that, like, somehow the Predators got a hold of some of the Xenomorphs, and then were like, these are the ultimate game to hunt for us. So, like, you know, because that's yeah. the whole shtick with Predator, right, is, like, Schwarzenegger and Danny Glover it's, and all those guys. It's, it's like, funny that... I'm hunting humans for sport. So well, it used like, to be. It used to be before this <laughs> before this new movie came out. Yeah. Well, what was the premise in the new movie? Oh, oh okay. So they, they retconned the reason why the predators come to Earth, <laughs> and it's the fucking. It's probably one of the stupidest things I've ever, I've ever heard. It's like, no, no longer are they trying to just hunt dangerous game, uh, or whatever. It's it's they're hunting races so that they can extract their dna to improve themselves and here's the best part the reason why they're after this kid is because he's autistic and that is the next level of evolution that is the premise of well well also well people with autism kevin, do i can see kevin laughing right now on screen <laughs> well, people and... people with autism do have like abilities to analyze things yeah, but... differently yeah. than People you can read their numbers. language, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, here was the thing too, wasn't it? Like in the new Predator movie, like they we're all going to be dead because of global warming, and part of it is they want our DNA, so they can live on our planet. But then it's like, but we're all going to be dead, so our DNA won't help you survive on Earth if the Earth's climate has changed. It, it sounded to me like it was written by some sort of idiot, um, like so many movies are today. Like it's just nobody thinks about anything; they just like yeah. yeah this is a good idea. We'll just go with this. Maybe it doesn't make sense, but... But the Alien versus Predator stuff had nothing to do with any official Alien canon. It's, that's all no, it's just, nope. not official canon. That's all just like, what if, if Aliens and Predators fought each other? Kind yeah. Of thing. Yep, exactly. which, is, which is awesome. Because yeah. I remember seeing that, and they tried to like make that almost have like a real plot. They were like, you know, like they found that like structure under the ice in Antarctica or whatever, and it was like... Yeah. They tried to say it like predated like Aztecs and Egyptian and whatever, like all their pyramidal like buildings that those ancient civilizations used were like, you know, based on this, right. you know, predator god that they worshipped, you know, that came to our planet every year. Well, that's a and, good transition because you were talking about the Arctic and you know what happened in the Arctic? Nope. The thing. Oh. The thing. <laughs> um, all right. The thing is... Um, is amazing. I, Kevin, you've seen the thing, correct? Please no. tell me you've seen it. Oh my goodness! No, sorry, guys. Kevin doesn't even talk about the movies he has seen. So, <laughs> 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 um, there has been money. <laughs> no. um, the thing is, is part of John Carpenter's uh, Apocalypse trilogy, which is in the mouth of madness. Uh, the thing and the other one that I always forget the title of. Um, that's good commentary right there. Um, and now Kevin's just gone. He's walked away. <laughs> uh, the door's open. The door's closed. Bye, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <Kevin. laughs> he, he left us. Um, yeah. Uh, I have seen it, the thing. For not it, liking horror movies, I actually do kind of enjoy the thing. Um, I've only seen it like twice. But. Um, you know, and especially for an older movie, like I thought, like the effects were great, and uh, oh, the effects are amazing, and they hold up. Yeah. They they do. They look. They, they hold look up. Really no, they hold up pretty good. Yeah, and they it really. Well, they have that visceral. They're they're real effects, and so when there's when there's blood splatter and stuff like that, it's all real. It's not that digital mist that looks like garbage. You yeah, know? well, we we talked about this stuff a little bit last yeah, time, we, and we I don't know, that, did you cut? The, did you cut that though? No, I, that's I all. I listened to it, but I can't remember if you cut it. it. No, okay. we we ran out of things cut to it. talk about with Venom because it was a boring movie ever. Oh, let's let's yeah. let's uh, let me let me stop that for one second because we I didn't ask Kevin. What did you think of Venom? I mean, it, it was okay to watch. <laughs> was there anything so exactly correct? What we said. correct. <laughs> okay. See, that's that is my that's that's I think all of and our that's takes. Coming, on it. That's coming from me too, which I. I, mean, I normally don't really criticize movies that bad. Well, I mean, 
and there wasn't much to criticize. There wasn't a whole lot to criticize. Nothing to praise. It, so. I know. I mean, eh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Anyway, sorry. I just forgot yeah. to ask you what you thought but, of it, and because uh, I know you said you liked the fight scenes. Because you did text yeah. me and you said you did like the fight scenes and stuff, but yeah. Okay, back to a yeah. good movie. Well, as far as <laughs> yeah, as far as the thing goes, what I said like last podcast, and I'll say it again this time is. Uh, the thing was cool for me because I really like movies where, like, it makes you think. Like, you know, you watch Alien, you watch a lot of other horror movies, and, like, yeah, you might be wondering, like, you know, where where are they going to pop out of? You know, like, where is Jason going to come from and get this person or whatever? But the thing was cool because, like, he is one of the people, you know, that's in well, this base. And you're like, who the fuck is it? Who well, you is could it? write... You could write a doctoral thesis, and people have done this shit, where, like, scene for scene by scene, okay, which one of these people is the thing? And people go back and they know to see who the person that got transformed, and um, you, you could you could spend a lot of time trying to figure out, okay, in this scene, was he all... I know he was turned into the thing later, but is he the thing in this scene? And And what makes that movie so creepy is it's such... Like, in a lot of horror movies the thing that's trying to kill you is overtly hostile. Like it's always trying, like Jason is, is always hostile. Right. Like, um, you know, the thing about the thing is it acts completely normally. Like it, it's, it's a changeling. It, it tries to blend in and does a great job of it until it is discovered. And holy shit, does stuff go crazy really fast? Like before you can even react And that movie has such a slow burn. And the scariest part of that movie, I think, when it comes to straight up horror, is when they go to um, defibrillate the guy and the thing reacts violently to it because it's being electrically shocked and its chest opens up as a giant mouth and it bites that guy's arms off. And the reason why that's so terrifying is because the movie hasn't been like that. The movie has been all this like psychological, like, oh my gosh, one of these things is a monster and, and we've gotten little hints of it. And then all of a sudden, shit goes fucking nuts, you know? And well, it rips well, that guy's point, off. And, and after that, it's like, okay, game on. Now we know what the stakes are, you know? Well, at that point in time, like, you've seen two... I think you, at that point in time, you see, like, only two different, like, manifestations of it. Yeah. Um, you see the, uh, like, uh, the dog. Yeah. And then the alien body that they bring... So maybe three. So then, the, then what's his name? Oh, God. I can't remember the one guy's name where they find him outside and he was already being transformed. Right. And they, and they uh, he was like halfway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, what's great about the, uh, defibrillator scene too, as far as just imagery that makes you go, ugh, you know, is, um, when they, they blast it with the flamethrower and the head separates itself from the body, hits the floor, sprouts these legs and like stalk eyes and like runs away. It's like, I love I love that. Scene oh my because god! Yeah, they, because I like how that it like it shows it in the background scuttling by. Yeah, and they both kind of they all just kind of turn their heads and they look at it and they're like, "You got to be fucking kidding me!" Like, oh my god! Yeah, that that movie and so it works on a couple levels. It's terrifying because you never know who the thing is and who it isn't. And then at the end, like it seems very likely, and this is why it's part of the apocalypse. It seems very likely that this thing is going to get to the mainland and um that computer that runs uh like pong and can also simulate a, a virus or, or disease spreading like it can simulate changes uh, that versatile computer i don't think i could do that on my computer <laughs> and keep in mind something like that probably costs like you know several thousands of dollars at, at the beginning then. they're like playing chess and pong on it well and i like and i know that like people have done analysis is analysis analyses analyses analysis excuse me analysis is, 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 is. and uh like the ending of whether or not uh yeah mccready or, or childs is uh is the thing the great thing about it is i think you said it was it's childs and mccready at the end that's the yep. black guy's name right is childs yep, yep, yep. um the fact that he isn't breathing people have people have done analysis and they're like but he, he never is really breathing takes the breath he is breathing. Is he? If you okay. if you watch it, you can see it, like there's no like there's no way you could. I mean, maybe nowadays you could edit that out, but I don't think back then they could have edited out his breath when they're you know in a 
cold. <laughs> they're in a cold climate. You know, you can well, see. I would, you can see challenges. I would breath. like to think. I would like to think that um, like the world isn't destroyed, but knowing that it's part of what he calls the apocalypse trilogy, and in the other two movies in the apocalypse trilogy, the world is overtly destroyed. Well, I know the world is overtly destroyed in the mouth of madness. Um, um in I, I other personally... film. Oh, sorry. My personal take on it is that it's Childs, just because um, of how untrustworthy he is of McCready, and like throughout the film, thinking that. McCready is one of the things and at the end of the film McCready hands him the drink and says let's just sit here for a while and Childs takes a drink of it and then McCready smiles so it's like he I think he knows you know at this yeah, point in time like at least that's my right. that's my take on it um that's what I would think too um in the mouth of madness has uh what Sam Neill from Jurassic Park and he's a uh we'll, we'll talk about that movie for a minute because it's kind of awesome we'll do a quick synopsis he's an insurance um auditor like investigator and uh they have a writer who's kind of a combination of of lovecraft and um uh who am i thinking of he writes all the movies or all the books he's the most prolific writer ever help me uh, you, uh stephen, king. I was stephen, say king. stephen king um yeah and he uh he's supposed to outsell stephen king i can't believe i blanked on stephen king's name but whatever um and he disappears like right is his last like book in the trail in like some novel series that he's writing a horror series and um it, long story short the insurance investigator finds this town by like piecing together all the maps on like the cover art of his books and he finds a town in maine that doesn't really exist and uh, what this author has been writing has been like fed to him by this demon and it's like the more people believe it it's like kind of pulling it into our universe and stuff and so at the end of the movie like there's mass riots and people are turning into monsters and mm -hmm. society is falling apart. And Sam Neill has like gotten himself locked up in an insane asylum. And it's like that movie overtly ended with the end of the world. The other one is about like this demon being pulled through a mirror. It's like this evil God being pulled through a mirror. And like this church has had this key and like for thousands of years and they try to study it. And in studying it, they basically release it. And these people in the future send back a signal and they can send like into people's dreams and it says like don't do this like it, it destroys the world like this is our only hope and people that sleep near the near the mirror like have this dream and um at the end of the movie people are still having like the dream is like this person coming out of the church and they're like basically possessed by the god by the evil god and at the end of the movie, like the dream is still happening, but it's just a different person coming out of the church like later. So they just like postponed it, but they weren't able to stop it. Um, so that's that's the whole apocalypse trilogy right there. Uh, the thing is definitely the best by a wide margin. Um, In the Mouth of Madness is kind of cool. No, I, ha I have not seen um, either one of those. I I've only seen the thing, so. We should we'll we'll check them out. We'll have to watch them together sometime and see what we think because I know only, I know all only three of those... if only if Webb holds me tight while we watch it. Yeah, I was I just gonna say, say that I'm gonna need that. <laughs> we can cuddle. Well, yeah, I I know all three movies were kind of critically panned and all three of them actually didn't do that good at the box office. The only one that's really gotten a reevaluation as like seen as successful is the thing. Um, the other two are still kind of. Yeah, but I, I still think they look interesting. Yeah. Um, like I said, uh, the last part of my holy trinity of horror movies would be Halloween, and I, I know it kind of like birthed the slasher genre, if I'm correct on that. Um, but. Well, did it though? I mean, there's there's always been movies like Psycho, and yeah. um, uh, but I think it kind of definitely made a subgenre at least. Yeah. Um, but I mean, as far as slasher films go, that's like I feel like that's like kind of my gold standard. Um, I as much as I love Friday the Thirteenth and Nightmare on Elm Street, nothing compares. Um, I think there's a lot of the the soundtrack is great. the The atmosphere is great. The dread is great. Um, I don't know. 
Yeah, that's definitely one I need to rewatch because I really don't remember a, a lot from it. And it's kind of it's a it's a slow burn. Um, I I mean I I guess I wouldn't call it a slow burn, but it slowly evolves. Like it starts off as like creepy stalking, and then eventually you know evolves to him murdering all the the babysitters and stuff. Um, but as one does with babysitters, I mean that's, oh, that's I mean, what else would you do with the babysitter? Um, have have you seen the original Halloween um, webbed? I have, yeah. It's been a long time. I mean, the biggest thing that I didn't understand about that, so give me a little info on this, is, like, do they ever show him without the mask thing that he wears? They show him without the mask very briefly at the end of the first... of, of, the, of the film. Um, it's, like, uh, right after the whole scene where he's, like, breaking into the closet and she stabs him and she thinks he's like unconscious and then he gets up and he starts to try and strangle her and she rips his mask off and he stops strangling her for a second to put the mask back on and that's when you know uh dr loomis comes in and shoots him now okay that the, that's the william shatner mask right yes okay what what a bizarre thing yeah what a bizarre thing to create like a an iconic horror villain with <laughs> Is that what it was supposed to be? It was a William it, Shatner it a, mask? It was, no, it is. It is a, a William Shatner, Shatner mask. mask. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's I did funny. not know that. I didn't really realize that. I guess, but yeah, that's I mean, that's what bizarre. I. That's one of the things I didn't get. Is like, I, I mean, his his former psychiatrist or whatever the hell, Loomis, and then like, um, uh, why am I? Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, they. So they like see him without the mask, but you don't really. No. And then like they. By the way, can we talk they, for a second about like... the fact that Jamie Lee Curtis was a Stone Cold Fox when she was younger? <laughs> like, what was the movie she was in? Even when she was a little bit older, she was in a film where um, her husband was like a spy or something like that. That was, that was Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it was True yeah. Lies. True Lies. She looks amazing in True Lies. Like she looks like a woman like fifteen years younger in True Lies. Yeah. All right, I, I guess I'm done reminiscing about <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis's body, but yeah, I wasn't gonna indulge in that too much. Sorry. All right. Wait, um, I, need an, I need another yeah. second. Is he like like semi invulnerable or something too? Because like he gets attacked a lot throughout the film, so isn't he? And he like just kind of keeps coming. Like well, they shoot him, they okay, stab him. In the in the in the original film, he gets like poked through the poked in the eye and like stabbed with the knife like once, and then he gets shot. Um, and in the other in the later movies he's kind of more considered like a force of nature where like he gets impaled he gets shot multiple times he gets you know set on fire but he never dies um, uh, it's hard to really say because like even in the new one he gets multiple injuries and he keeps coming I guess the, the point the whole point is, is that he's just like he is like a, a a force of evil and like that's like their whole that's what they're going with it they're doubling down on that in this new I mean, okay yeah like he's so crazy serial killer that like he's almost unstoppable like he's just like i gotta keep killing things and you I, know it's like even it, death won't stop me right like he's right, so, he's so he's, he's so psychotic he's so psychotic and evil that he just like it doesn't phase him Okay. They Does literally run talk? him over with Does a he car. Ever talk? I yeah. can't remember if he talks. No, he. Never I don't talks. think so. Isn't his thing that he's like completely silent? Yeah. You only hear him breathing. Um. So here's here's a question because I don't remember. It's been too long. What was his origin story? Well, his origin story is that uh, uh, on Halloween night when he was like six years old, he just randomly grabbed a kitchen knife and went up into his sister's bedroom and started stabbing the shit out of her killed her and then he was placed as in a mental... one does yeah he was placed in a, in a in a mental institution and uh that was like the whole thing with dr loomis is he he was trying to keep him there keep him locked up because he knew like he tried to he tried to basically you know rehabilitate him but then he realized that the he was just basically evil and that he wanted to keep him locked up okay and then he escapes but, but we never like found out like what caused the trauma that he would do something like that or um i think later in later movies 
it's been a while since I've seen some of the later sequels. It was like a whole cult thing that like uh, I I don't remember exactly, but they tried to give him like a backstory to his motivation and why he was evil, and I I don't really recall it to be honest. Okay. But the new movie's good. Um, as far as yeah, tell us about like as far as tell us about the new go, movie. I I probably won't see it in theaters. I'll probably catch it when it's on Netflix or something. But as far as sequels go, it was pretty solid. Um, and for those that don't know, that they completely took out all the other movies, even Halloween two. Everything is just swept under the rug, and this is just a straight sequel to the original movie. I'm okay with that because if the if the other movies were kind of like of diminishing quality and if they want to do something like I'm I'm more okay with that than doing like a soft reboot or something like that. I mean, I guess in a way it's kind of a soft reboot because it's probably really similar to the first movie, but it is it's got it's got a lot of there's a lot of good stuff in it, but there's also like a lot of the stuff that's just like why. <laughs> so it's kind of a it's a good movie, but it's also very frustrating cuz it's got some good stuff in it and they kind of just they don't execute it great um and then like i said it, it could have been a lot better but i liked it for what it was yeah, yeah it looks like he's blind in the movie he uses sonar like a well, bat that's what all the got, his is. one his one eye is probably blind because he got stabbed in there 40 years ago oh yeah. that makes sense. is that how long it's been since the first yep, 40 years <laughs> holy shit how old is Jamie Lee Curtis now? Old. Old. And you know the worst thing is, is that, like, they made her look a lot older in this film than she does, like, if you look at an interview with her, she looks a lot younger, and in this movie, she looks really old. Well, she's eating all that yogurt. Of course she looks well, so young. Well, it was really funny, because at the end of the movie... Jamie uh, Lee Curtis is 59 years old. Only 59? Well, yeah. that makes sense. I mean, if it was 40 years ago, she would have been 19, so... Yeah. Well, anyway, uh... At the end of the movie, you know, they, uh, you know, they, they supposedly kill Michael Myers and, you know, uh, not right. And, uh, start the credits start rolling. Uh, Kelly looks at me and goes, I guess all that Activia paid off. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, she's, she's incredibly regular, so, yeah. you know, but it gives she, you power and confidence. Like, I liked the uh, the slower stalkerish aspect of the first film, where it's kind of like it's creepy because he's like following them and stalking them. And there's a little bit of that in this film. Um, it's in the the little bit of it that's in there is done really well. Um, the thing I don't like is that like uh, it just like escalates to him just like slaughtering everything in his path, um, like. It, it he's trying to get to her is that his goal like he no wants and that's finish. and that's the thing is that like it's like at first you think like oh that's what what's gonna happen he's gonna get out and he's gonna go straight for like jamie lee curtis's family and uh like that's like the path that it's gonna take and it doesn't he goes back to the sit the 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 town and he he just walks walks down the street and he picks a house and he walks into the house and he kills that person and he leaves that house and he walks to the next house and kills that person you, you know, said like, that he was supposed to be like he was in an insane asylum ever since then or yep. where's he been mm -hmm. okay so how did he get out he went okay so it i don't you mean in this in this one yeah like why is he in so the neighborhood? uh he's being transferred to another uh facility and uh he they, they they don't show it on camera, but like, um, is this the original or the new one? The new one. We're the, new. About the new one. So he's being transported to a new uh, a new facility, and then suddenly this this guy and his son are driving down the road, and they come across the the bus. It's you know crashed, and all of the psychotic inmates are just out wandering around. It's it's kind of a similar scene <laughs> to the original where. Um, you know, Dr. Loomis goes up to the, the asylum or whatever, and all the inmates have been let out, and they're all just wandering around on the grounds. So it's not, it was kind of a similar scene to that. Um, but I thought it would have been would have been cool if, like, the... Like I said, if it had been, like, an escalation of him finding uh, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, 
her family and stuff and stalking them versus going in and just slaughtering a bunch of uh, citizens in the town. I really think about it. That was the whole movie. Yeah, that's pretty much the whole movie. Like, is him killing random people until the last, like, 20 minutes? 10, 15? Yeah, it was, like, the last 20 minutes, and then it was like, oh, okay, now it's a showdown between Lori and Michael. Which? Which was good. It was, like, it was, I, mean... I liked it. I thought it was pretty tense. Like, you could see, like, like her whole thing is, like, uh, she was, like, turned into, like, a doomsday kind of prepper where her house is, like got all these traps and uh like secret things and she's got guns everywhere and she's like super paranoid and uh like her her whole thing is like so what she does is um he's in the house and she, she you know he's hiding somewhere and he's gonna try and spring out on her so she's going and she's taking a gun and she's checking each room and then she's got a button that she presses for each room that brings these metal bars down that close them behind her so he can't be like hiding in the room and like pop up behind her. So like she's really smart about it and I liked that. I liked that whole aspect of it. It was a very tense scene because it's quiet the whole time and you're like, he's going to jump out now. He's going to jump out can, now. Can, yeah. can you hear breathing during during that too? Yeah. It was, it was a really well done scene and I... I liked it. Um, I liked that end part of it, but like I said, it was like that whole thing for the first like half of the movie where he's just killing random people. You're like, okay, but do we need this? This is a little just it's just gratuitous violence for that for that reason, you know. What would have been really cool is if, um, and I already thought about it, is oh, because Kevin, you know the part where the kid and the dad come across the the van or the, mm-hmm. the truck with all the inmates or whatever in it it would have been interesting to have him follow the kid and the dad home and then have the kid be babysat by uh jamie lee curtis's granddaughter and yeah. that's how he like tracks that's how he tracks down uh laurie strode's character or you know you know i know it's like a horror movie but why do they always get out of the car I, I know. Oh well, that's okay. It it just it just pisses me off beyond Trans- belief. Transitioning a little because you made me think of something. Um, have you guys seen Human Centipede? Yes, <laughs> and I wish I would never have seen it. Okay, um, Tosh Daniel Tosh does a great bit talking about Human Centipede. He does. If you guys haven't seen it, he does like a twenty four minute breakdown of Human Centipede. Uh, I think it was on ComedyCentral.com. You can probably still watch it, where he does the most amazing synopsis of that movie. But the part of it that you made me think about is the girls are in the middle of nowhere, Germany. They're two American girls. And the part where their tire is flat and they immediately get out of the car. And he's like, a woman will drive for a year on a flat tire. Like, and that's absolutely true. Like, girls don't, they're like, oh, they get home and they're like, oh, my tire's flat. It's like, yeah, didn't you notice the car was, like, handling, like, shit? And it's like, in all these horror movies, immediately, like, something, oh, we're out of windshield wiper fluid. Let's get out of the car and walk through these dark woods. It's like, no. Right. <laughs> Nobody would do that, especially in a situation like that, you know? What was, oh. what was your favorite scene, Kevin, in that movie? Probably when Michael Myers stepped on the doctor's head. <laughs> oh, that did was Michael sad. Myers crushed someone's head. He did. Yes, he did. It was, it was amazing. I mean, I know it's in the trailers, but I really liked that scene where uh, he kills the reporter. Where uh, oh, in the bathroom, he's, he's just standing in front of the stall, and she's like, "Oh, this is occupied." And then he starts like shaking the door to scare the shit out of her, and then he puts his hand over the the top and he drops the teeth of the the gas station attendant right on the floor, and she's like, "Oh fuck," and then like she starts like trying to get away and like she stupidly goes into like, hits her wh- face on the toilet. Yeah, she hits her face on the fucking toilet. Yeah, it was it was it was good. I liked that scene a lot. Kind of brutal. It was brutal. The whole movie's brutal. Like the kills are terrible. really the kills are all really brutal. <laughs> That's good, because the problem with some of those movies is when they devolve into just, okay, someone got stabbed, and someone got stabbed again, and someone got stabbed. Like, that gets, I mean, this sounds kind of, this is a bizarre thing to say, but that gets kind of boring. Like, you need to have, like, interesting kills, you know, or it just mm-hmm. kind of falls apart. Yeah, um, there was a lot of head bashing. Yeah. Um, that was interesting. Uh, what, what else about that film? Let's see, uh. 
I liked the end near the end of the film because like the whole thing is about uh, Laurie Strode's care or uh, like uh, relationship with uh, her daughter and her Her granddaughter is like it's strained because she's so paranoid that he's going to come back so the daughter's like you're fucking crazy you ruined my childhood etc etc and at the end of the movie they're down in like the the shelter and the daughter has has the gun and she's pointing it up to where where michael is going to come around the corner and she's and she starts going mom i just can't do it i can't shoot him i can't do it and she starts like crying and then michael turned like comes around the corner and she's like ha got you and she shoots him and i was like oh that was awesome nice <laughs> does he actually does he die then or does he well what happens is, is they trap him in the house and then they burn the house down okay so they've left it open so for they've the left it open to where Halloween. he could possibly escape but like i don't know how he could because like Didn't he's they? locked in a basement with the bars like shutting him in there's really no way Ed, that he could escape but i mean obviously it's a movie so there's a way. Yeah. They didn't really. Didn't really what? They didn't. I feel like. Did, didn't they show the basement on fire and he was in the basement burning alive? Yeah, they didn't show him burning alive in the basement. They just, they just showed another shot of the basement where he wasn't in it. So I don't know if that was them saying, oh, maybe he got out. Ha ha ha. Probably. All right. Are there are there any other franchises we want to talk about? I mean, there's so this is such an expansive topic. I mean, there's I know there's so um, much more. Have you guys watched many of the the Conjuring universe movies? No, I don't. I've only get one. into those. I I don't know. And, oh, and, two. Yeah, uh, the movies that I hate are those ones that for they, the jump scare ones that were popular for a while too, where mm-hmm. it's like. The whole, you know, they, they put a camera on the whole theater's not paying attention. And when the camera footage slows down, you feel everyone in the theater start to pay attention because the movie's that predictable, you know? Right. Like, why else would the, the hidden ca- or the, you know, setup camera slow down? It's like people are fucking talking and not paying any attention. It's like, oh, here comes the jump scare. Oh, right. something moved in the closet. Okay, now I can go back to talking. It's like, what a fucking Yeah, the, the, conjuring, the Conjuring movies are, are big on the jump scare things, but there's also a couple of them that do the creepy factor really well. Uh, the first two Conjuring movies are really, like, they're solid. As far as you know what movie was um, was creepy as fuck, um, and I don't remember the name. You're going to remember because we saw it together. The one where he's a writer and he um, he moves his family into this house. Oh, 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 oh. Sinister. 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 Yeah. Sinister was really good. Um, like, I, my favorite scene in Sinister is when he's, like, up in the attic with the projector, and he finds the, the uh, I want to call them tapes, but they're not tapes. He, he finds the reels for the projector, mm-hmm. and he's sitting in the dark, like, watching, or maybe he's in his office, but he's by himself. It's the middle of the night, and you just hear the, like, thunk, there's no sound. It's just the thunk, thunk, thunk of the projector running, and, like, all the creep, like, the whole family being killed, like, you know, on this video, and that was really creepy. I yeah, thought that, that was, was really that, that was That's creepy, um, especially with when they had like special names for the ones. Like it was like when they're the ha- the family's all being hung, yeah. like, hanging out with the family or a, yeah. a family barbecue where they're all being burned alive, that sort of thing. It, yeah, yeah, That's, that was creepy. That's one of those things. That's one of those things where after it, it's like um, a rational person. You're like, all right, uh, we are moving. We will have movers come get all the furniture. And you know what? Fuck it. We'll leave the furniture. We'll burn the house down and we're gone tonight. You know, but like they always do these movies. Um, oh my God, we haven't talked about the shining uh, about a situation where people have multiple opportunities to leave. And they're just like, because they're not either not stable or in the shining, it starts off with like, he feels like this is his last shot. Like this is his time to write his novel when he's right. not really under a stressful situation. And he kind of blames his kid for his failures. And like, as the, the psychology of the, the poltergeist, like kind of like twists his head and it gets even harder and harder for him to even contemplate leaving. Um, yeah. I th- you know what? I think the shining is probably my favorite horror movie. Now that I think about it, like, um, the sh- yeah, I, evil dead is my favorite kind of lighthearted one. And I think of, for serious horror films because the shining has so many scenes that are just like you, it, they're so isolated you got the elevator scene with the blood you got the two little girls at the end of the hall mm-hmm. um you have the the naked prostitute that turns into the the zombie prostitute and chases him out of the room <laughs> um you know who attacks yeah. danny 
uh, that movie, and I mean, the book is great too. The book is absolutely amazing, but that movie is so creepy. I know, um, I know Kevin and I have both seen Hereditary. I know you haven't seen it. Did you ever watch The Witch? Me? Yeah, I, I, know. I have never seen The Witch. I have not seen The Witch either. Wasn't that one was fairly new, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a couple of years. It's been out for a couple of years now, I think. But that was really good. Um, uh, that was. I mean, it, it was pretty creepy, not overtly scary, um, but it had a it had some good dread building and it was it was actually pretty good. And I liked Hereditary a lot um, because that well, movie was very much creepy. like it, well, in there was no jump scares. And that's the thing. I think for a good good horror movies are all about. Uh, the imagery and how it makes you feel and like there's a difference between okay here's the difference between uh, like a scare and horror a scare is your wife is in the shower and you hear your wife in the shower so you go in there and you pull back the curtain and you yell and she jumps that's a scare okay that would be like you know a lot of horror movies do that horror though is you hear your wife in the shower you go to do that and there's no one in there like Makes you, you, you heard, you, yeah, you like you like heard her talking or, or singing in the shower, and when you pull back the curtain, there's nothing. That's fucking horror because that's unsettling. That's something that should not happen in our universe, and it puts you off balance. Right. And I think that the best horror movies are the ones that do that, where it's like, and and also that are consistent with their rules. That helps a lot too. I hate when a horror movie is like you know, kind of changes the rules on people and stuff like, especially if it's one where maybe some people are going to survive and it's like, okay, if they do the right things, they should survive. And I, and I also love horror movies where the people don't feel um, idiotic. Like, it, like, like uh, Webb was saying earlier, like when people like get out of the car or act in a way that you're like, no person would really do that. It's like, at that point, I want them to die because it's like, you, you know, you're in a messed up situation and you're acting right. completely irrationally. Like no person would do this. Yeah. And, I don't, I don't really like that. I don't, and I don't. I, oh, go ahead. No, th- I mean that's why, like, in the comedy ones, it's fine because you know that they're going to act stupid, and you're oh, yeah. going into it knowing that, right? But like, because the comedy movie, like, ones, they're playing on those tropes, like they're playing up the tropes right. of, of like a scary movie two has the best part where they're, um, you know, they're running down and they're like, uh, the, the white people are like, let's split up into groups, and and the black people are like, wait a minute, how come every time scary shit happens, you white people want to split up? Let's stay together, and the white people are like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, you, you, and you with me, and the white people just run off together and leave the black people standing alone. And it's just like uh, when they play on that trope, it's amazing. But I mean, it, it's a bad trope. It's something that should be done. The problem is, it's a trope that's actually used a lot in like horror movies that try to be legitimate. Like, well, one... and people try and argue that it, like, they're like, oh, well, you wouldn't have a movie if they if they didn't make mistakes. And it's like, no, and you, that's you not can, true. You can have an intelligent group of people still get killed uh, get get killed and still make all logical choices and yeah, it, that would make that would like actually the, make the movie even scarier yeah because it's like yeah, it's oh, like shit, the saw movies or something like i i don't mind the saw movies just from the aspect at least the cup first couple i didn't see any of the later ones because You're like not much. he's like a he's like an evil mastermind and he's kind of putting people in a situation where they can't even be stupid they they literally right. are like they, fucked kind of either way. They have to just they choose. They don't have a lot of choices. They think right. it's like the illusion of choice. Right. It's like it's like you know choose what you want to deal with. Either like you know, like like the one person's put in a chair where like they gotta like you know lose an arm in order to escape the trap or whatever. You know what I mean? Like there's no. Yeah, there's no like they accidentally walk into it just because they're being dumb like they right. literally are abducted and just forced to be in that situation well, and like that's scary because like you're sitting there thinking like oh fuck like what if that happened to me or something but like in a horror movie where the lady's like la 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 let me just walk right, right in here oh no i died like i i can't stand that unless i'm going into it knowing that it's gonna be like some sort of comedy version of it you know well, we, right. we talked about Predator before, and Predator's not really a horror movie. It kind of rides the line between, like, horror and action. But the thing that makes Predator so effective, I think, is these guys, as they're getting slaughtered by the Predator, we, we spent the first, like, the entire first act of the movie seeing how effective they are. Like, they go in, and it's this terrorist camp, and they just completely, like, waste all the terrorists. They don't lose a single man. Like, they, they really know what they're doing. They, and then at the... As you start, start to see them, like, they're still 
they're still effective killers and this thing is just better you know and that's that's what makes that so effective and it's the same thing for horror i think when um the blair witch project part of the reason that movie fell apart for me is they're this is really old but when they're out in the woods and they keep oh my god we're back at the river we're back at the river and i'm going like like they're going in circles and i'm like follow the river rivers don't run in circles like rivers go to civilization so you just follow the river downstream but instead they just keep going back into the woods and like coming back to the same place and it's like it's one thing to be lost in the woods it's another to like find landmarks repeatedly and just not use them and it's like okay that was a movie where i'm like i want i want all these people to die because they're they should not have been in the forest like they didn't need a witch to kill them like probably just the forest would have killed these people because they're that stupid you know yeah I mean, uh, how do you guys feel about remakes? Well, I like it. I like remakes better than reboots, honestly, because like I I think, well, you know what I mean? A soft reboot. Mm -hmm. I I, so many soft reboots have been garbage. The Star Trek one and the Star Star Wars is basically a soft reboot at this point. It's like you want to tell the story again. Just tell the story again and do it your own way. I, I don't like when they oh it's in the same universe but we're going to tell the exact same thing happened 20 years later with different characters um i thought the evil dead remake was really good it yeah. it was different you know it was yeah. more of a serious horror film right um, um like uh robocop was terrible i'm i mean like specifically like related to horror movies like um when they rebooted friday the 13th that was a pretty solid movie yeah and i think I think horror kind of lends itself to that too, because um, these stories are almost like a lot of them are almost like universal, like monster stories, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like you can, you can kind of use the same characters and just tell it again and and maybe use new modern film techniques and see if you can do something better. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's certain stories that you shouldn't redo though. Like if they were, if they were going to be like, Oh, we're going to remake the shining. No, I would have no interest in that. That movie is perfect. If, uh, and they did remake the thing. I mean, you saw it. It was technically a, a soft reboot, but the remake of the thing. Technically a soft reboot slash prequel. Yeah. yeah, it's like you're. But you said I didn't see it. I had no interest in it. You said it's the exact same story. It's like beat for beat, but just not as good. It's like, well, if you're yeah. gonna if you're gonna do it new, you should do a couple things differently, you know, because we already have the thing. Like we don't need the thing again we have the perfect version of it. Right. So that's my opinion about it. I mean, yeah. Um, did you, I know you s- did. I, I know Kevin did. Did you see the it remake? Me? I, yeah. Uh, I liked the it remake. The it remake was really good. I thought so. Like I, uh, hmm. did not see it, but my brother-in-law really, really likes the original it and saw the remake and said he really liked it. So. The o- the only thing like spoilers again like I I liked the beginning um I thought right from the start when he kills the little brother and the little brother has his arm ripped off and he's like crawling away in the gutter trying to get away like this little kid is missing his arm and that's just a scene that makes you go ugh like it was very like it the imagery was good and like really off putting and you're like wow this movie this movie is gonna be pretty ultra violent if they're like ripping off you know because in the first movie he just kind of disappears. In this movie, he, like, brutally gets his arm bitten off at the very... It's, like, one of the first things that happens. The only thing I didn't like about it, it was a little heavy on the jump scares, but I thought that was... The imagery was good enough and the atmosphere was good yeah. enough that that uh, made up for I, I would it. Say, I would agree with you on the jump scares thing. Yeah, there were t- too much. And then the other thing was, he would he would show up as what scared them, and then he would revert to the clown. And, and I kind of thought it should have been more the other, the way, other way, where around. it was like I, he yeah, appeared as the clown and then, then like, because cause wasn't the whole thing of the clown to kind of, like, lure kids? Like, it, it's mm-hmm. like a predator thing where mm-hmm. it's like, oh, come in my van and, you know, this place where it's like we can be alone. And then, then he kind of turns into whatever scares them. This, for some reason, the clown was almost like a, oh, it's me, I gotcha. Like, the clown is my ground state. And I thought that was strange. And there was a couple, like, they had a couple of, like, the show, like, show them, like, the missing kids and stuff. I would have preferred to show up some of those scenes. Um, there's a really, really creepy part in, in the novel that I wish they had shown. And they show the kid, they put the, sh- the kid's poster up and he's missing in the movie. Yeah. So it was, like, it, I, I almost feel like it was, it was planned, but they just didn't, either didn't film it or cut it. Um, 
but like in the in the book it's like the kid is he leaves his house because his you know his dad is like abusive or whatever and he's trying to get away from him and his brother was actually killed by his dad for like for like beating the shit out of him and he didn't you know the dad didn't get like arrested or anything like that so he goes by the canals and he's looking in the water and he sees a shark you know he's thinking of jaws or whatever and then all of a sudden he hears he hears his brother calling his name and then you see his brother like crawling towards him from like out of the canal and his brother like pulls him into the canal and kills him oh jeez and like that's like that's a really creepy part in the book for me and i and i wish i wish that it's I wish that had been in the movie. Um, I thought some of the imagery in the movie that was really, really good. I liked when the um, the boy was in the theater. Theater. He was in the library, and he was um, looking through like the history of Derry, and they had the part about the explosion. Like all the kids were at that place, like and it exploded and it killed. Remember so many people, mm-hmm. and as he's turning the page, it's the same picture over and over again, but it just keeps zooming in. And it zooms into a tree, and one of the kids from the explosion, the head is lodged up in the branches of the tree, and it's like looking at him, and it like winks at him or something like that. It it um, moves, and uh, it, that was that was a really intense scene. Mm-hmm. And then he like runs down into the basement of the library and has has a moment down there with some monsters. But um, that was the part I like more. I like that imagery more so than just when when it is like turning into a plague monster or whatever he was, you know. Right, right. Um, but yeah overall i thought it was good and i can't wait for the uh the second half i wonder if the adult half will be as good but i hope so they just announced it like i think the other day like the like a poster for it yeah it was so i'm sure a trailer will come out soon yeah it was a long movie as it was and i remember because i didn't know they were splitting it as i was watching it and i think it was like an hour and a half into the movie and i was like oh i guess i guess they're gonna split this into two parts which makes sense it needs it Mm mm-hmm the um, the adult part I think is weaker in the novel, but we'll see what they I, do. With I it. I agree that the adult part is a lot weaker in the novel, uh, but the thing is, is that in the novel it cuts between both times. Like it cuts like there'll be the adults or er, they're the adults are arriving in Derry, and as they're arriving in Derry, they're remembering things that happened, and that's where you yeah. get the flashbacks is when they were kids and stuff like that. So that's why the adult parts kind of a little bit weaker because they focus more in the books about uh, on on them as kids um have you guys read the dark tower no oh well the dark tower is a bunch of books it's like it's just a giant epic and that movie was terrible this is a little off topic because it's not horror but don't waste your time with the dark tower movie because it's like it would be like trying to cram the lord of the rings honestly a series that's like twice as long as the lord of the rings it'd be like trying to cram that into one like 90 minute film it's absolutely ridiculous how they tried to do that and it it just fails like so bad it fell on its face it's like wow you took one of the most beloved book series and just like shat out one movie and now you're done it's kind of disappointing but what can you do it's hollywood i guess uh a good question to ask everybody and we'll just kind of go around and uh talk about it what do you think adds to a good horror story uh and i'm gonna start with i'm gonna start with uh webbed I mean, kind of going with what I talked about before is, like, I mean, obviously, like, in horror, we're talking about things that are, like, supernatural, right? So it can't really be real, but I want the characters to be believable, if that makes sense. Like, so that the monster or, the, or whatever is not they don't have to necessarily be believable that that really could exist. But like, I want the characters that are maybe like the, the people being attacked or hunted or whatever the hell it is, like just not be complete fucking idiots. You know, <laughs> it, it, I don't know. It just bothers me. Like, that's why, like I liked the thing, you know, it was like a decent horror movie for me as someone who's not really a horror fan because and everybody act logic acted right because they were legitimately like who the fuck is the thing we don't know we're gonna try our best to figure it out and there's no way for them really to figure it out and that's why it like it works because you're like like they're like fucking freaked out for a good reason 
you know, and they're not like in general anyway, doing like just blatantly stupid shit. Mm -hmm. So like, that's when it like seems more terrifying to me, you know, that jump scare thing with idiots who are like, you know, let me open this door and let me open that door. And you know what? I think I'm going to go wander off down the street by myself so I can get attacked. Like that kind of thing. It's like, no, that's stupid. Like, Right. But in a situation like the thing or whatever, you know, where they're just, they're like trapped, like in the Arctic, in this base, they don't really have anywhere to go. And they got to try to fucking figure this out if they want to survive. Like there's like that sense of dread, you know, like, oh, sh- oh, damn, we could be screwed. Right. Kevin. Well, I really think horror movies need character development. Because you can't be attached to a movie without any character development. Yeah, any any good horror film, any good movie needs that. And I think sometimes in horror movies they forget that they they just well because people their are, logic, their people logic are logic very serious. They're going to be dead. Yeah, their logic is oh they're going to be dead, so you don't really need to build this character up. And it's like well if you want you, to give you should a fuck still, why they die, yeah, you should still take time to characterize them. It makes you scared. Like if if you get invested in this person. I honestly, I think like it's not horror, but I think that's why like the Game of Thrones thing like has roped in some people who are not really fans of the fantasy genre. Like I really like fantasy and sci-fi, and I get into all that shit. And like I really liked reading Game of Thrones. I, I, I Jeff honestly was the one that recommended to us um, Game of Thrones like before the series came out, and I think he said like this might be being a TV series or something soon. And I needed something to read at the time, so I read them, and I like fell in love with them right away. Like I powered through all those books. I'm still waiting for the next one. Fucking George R. R. Yeah, we, t- we talked him. about that the other day about how he's been working on this book for like seven <laughs> but... years, and he just released a different book. Um, but I think, like, that's why the, the the lay person, I guess if that's the word you want to use, like, really likes Game of Thrones is, I mean, it's HBO, and there's graphic sex and shit in it, too, so I think people like that. But there's these characters, you get invested in them, right? And then he's yeah, just like, connect. and you know what? Uh, Red Wedding, they're dead. And you're like, what the fuck just happened? Like, I feel like that, like, well, is why that works. And that It's works. not just that. It's it's in Game of Thrones um, when you when you see something like the Red Wedding happen. And then you go back and you really think about what got you there. It feels earned. Uh, Whereas right. something like yeah. The Walking Dead, The Walking Dead just kills characters because oh, they're yeah. like, oh, we need to raise ratings. We need to kill a character. Yeah, that, Game of yeah. Thrones, like with Rob being killed, you look back and you see every choice he made that led him to the point of him being killed at his wedding. And it's like, okay, that made sense. Very rarely in Game of Thrones does someone die just to die. It's like their own choices bring them to that. Sometimes yeah. sometimes they don't have a good choice and they probably would have died either way, but you can at least track back and see, I see how we got here. It wasn't just random. I'm going to say, I mean, as, a, as an aside, I know we're talking about horror here, but like uh, overall, I think the quality of writing for the for Game of Thrones has taken a nosedive. Oh, the last from, few seasons have been last, pretty bad. The last few seasons. It's because I they still got love past it. the books. I still, love, I still love the show, but as far as quality writing goes... Uh, it has not sold me on that. You don't yeah. think uh, you want the good girl, but you need the bad pussy was like Oscar worthy, just amazing writing. You, are you saying that that wasn't a good line? I'm saying that the the story in Dorne is Dorne was a waste is, of is, time. A, is a is kind of a weak point in. Uh, um, it's a weak for, point in the novels, Crows. but it's yeah, a hell of a lot better Crows, than it is in, in the show. Um, it's not my it's not my favorite storyline in there. And in the show, it was even, it was much worse, handled much more poorly. And I never thought I would, go, I would say, I miss the, the plot line from the books. <laughs> well, going back to horror, and mine is a minor point, like the one thing that, that um, they need to do is, because the web and uh, Kevin talked about the, the big points, but a minor thing that is like important to me is that you need to not have a stupid name for your monster uh the moment you call the monster bagul or something like that <laughs> like you just completely lose me and i'm like really we're all getting killed by bagul tonight like that's what's happening fuck this but like when you have um it, and whether they call it by that or not but when you have something that's kind of vague like the thing or it i think that personally is like a lot more effective than just a silly like demon name because i can't take bagul seriously that's always the one that sticks out to me and i liked that movie but still as soon as they were like well you've got a bagul problem <laughs> it's like, well and that's fuck. one of the things that's one of the things i was going to say is that that there's um 
a good a good st- horror story will tell you enough for you to fill in some of the gaps but won't tell you everything that's one of the things that really bugged the shit out of me about sinister is that i liked the movie but like there's you can show us a little bit of the st- of what the demon is but you don't have to tell us everything so right. like basically halfway through Take the, the book, halfway through the movie like they talk to this specialist and he's like yeah it's but cool uh this is this and this is what he does and he uh he, cor- he corrupts children and he, he goes after them and this is how it happens and uh blah blah blah, blah. It's like he's an exterminator that you're talking. He's like, well, here's what you do. You put out the the cool stuff. Now, the other side of that is I like, especially when it comes to supernatural movies, I do like there to be some discovery. It was better back in the days before the internet and people had to like go to creepy libraries and like read, you know, and like, what what is this? Oh, it's, you know, um, nowadays they just get online and they find a professor of Bagoolology from like USC and he tells them how to defeat Bagool. But, but. But I, I do think there need to be like rules for the monster and there needs to be a way that you at least have hope of defeating it because mm-hmm. some of these movies, it's like, well, it's just an uh, like all powerful monster and you can, it's going to kill you no matter what you do. And it's like, all right, well, like it follows, at least it follows. That's another Michigan one. It follows had like rules to it. It's like, I think if did, wasn't, it if you had sex, you passed it on to the new person and it left you alone. Yep. Um, Unless it killed that person, then it came back to you. Oh, well, that's, that's shitty. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I like there to be a way out. And I, I think sometimes when you have some of these movies where it feels like, okay, like Sinister is a little bit guilty of that too. Like they never really had a plan for like, well, how do you defeat it? Oh, it's just going to kill your whole family. Well, okay. And, you know, I, I mean, I guess he could have left. I guess that would have been the one thing that but I think well, it would have followed that, him. No, that was, that was the whole thing at the end of the, of the film was uh the cop figured it out he was like all the people died after they moved out of the house like that was the whole thing he was like he goes oh shit after after they moved out of the house is when they moved to a new location is when uh the families died so i don't remember that but he tried to call he tried to call the writer but at that point in time uh he was already getting killed by his daughter oh yeah okay that kind of makes (laughs) i kind of remember that now but yeah, I don't know. I, I like number one. Don't have a silly name. Even I, having it be completely vague is better than giving it a silly name. Mm-hmm. I, I like the thing. I like it. I like stuff like that where you know we we don't really have a name for this thing because it's a fucking crazy supernatural thing. Why would we have a name for it? Right. Um, and then also, you know, give us give us a way out. Give us at least a little bit of hope. We're like, oh, maybe they'll survive. Even if you kill them all, I don't care if they all die. But <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like, there's got to be that little that little creak you know in the door of like maybe they can defeat this demon or maybe they can defeat this this monster and and escape um i will say going all the way back to one of the first movies we talked about cabin in the woods i hated the ending of cabin in the woods it's a very joss whedon ending um if you've watched like buffy the vampire slayer and angel but i hate it it seemed very selfish where the teens like figure out what's going on they're like oh like we have to die or the entire world ends and the stoner guy is just like oh well i guess we're gonna hang out here until like ancient gods kill us and it's like well you could still like maybe at that point it was a little too late but i know early on they they figure it out and they're still like oh fuck you we're gonna fight and we're not gonna die and it's like i know it's a bad situation but you're literally dooming everyone you know everyone you love everyone that exists to be killed by giant you know gods and at the end of the movie that's exactly what happened and i was kind of like you kind of made them not the heroes. I know they're just supposed to be teenage kids. They're supposed to be college kids. But to me, that was kind of a weird ending. Um, I thought the proper ending would have been for them to be like, you know what? Cause you're going to die anyway. It's not, it's not a, a, do I sacrifice myself for everyone? It's like you, your fate is already sealed. You either die with everyone else or you die to save everyone else. And I thought they were a little um, selfish at the end of that movie. Right. No, I agree. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, anything that gives me some information but not enough to be like over explaining it yeah Um, well and and show don't tell works a little bit too like and and when you're gonna dump uh when you're gonna dump info like that in a movie you have to be really careful how you do it and i think the worst way was like you know like in sinister where someone's like oh we're gonna skype with this professor and he's gonna like tell us all about the ghoul the demon and i'm like this is really freaking stupid (laughs) you know right like but but in that 
where he finds that now the opposite of that is when he finds the projector and he's playing the tapes and he's learning about the demon that way. Like that's a super effective way to tell us about the demon. Uh, right. And maybe, and maybe, you know, he can read, you can find somebody's journal and maybe they wrote a couple things about like, Oh, you know, when we did this, like, you know, we lived or we survived, like things like that are, are maybe a slightly better way. I'm not an expert at horror scripts. I, I would feel more comfortable writing science fiction or something like that. Horror is not really my wheelhouse, but yeah, right. I know, I know that's what's important to me in it. Um, also, it's kind of like you said, establishing your rules. If you have a way out, find a way out. Um, but if you're going to bring in a new element and flip it, it needs to be like, it needs to be able to make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I'll take something like, uh, I think you and I both saw the movie, uh, it's called The Boy. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. It's the one where she goes to babysit for the nanny for these this couple, and it's a doll. And she's, like, changing the doll and, like, That's feeding creepy. the doll and stuff like that. And she's just kind of going through the motions. Creepy. Yeah, well, they're, they're and, and the whole time, like, when she doesn't follow the rules, something weird happens. And you think it's a supernatural film throughout the entire thing. You're like, oh, the spirit of the boy is in this doll. Well, at the end of the film, her abusive boyfriend shows up, right? And he breaks the doll. And the house starts, like, the room starts shaking. And you're like, oh, fuck some like you know the wall's gonna start like caving in on them or something and all of a sudden this mirror breaks and you see that the kid actually is an adult and the doll was just like his like you know like uh an avatar for him and he was actually living inside the walls and that's where all the weird stuff was happening like you know things going missing and the dolls changing places and stuff was him he's living inside the walls moving the doll around moving like the like the stuff around in the house like that sort of thing and you're like oh okay so it went from like a supernatural horror film to like a thriller slasher film and it made sense even though it was kind of like it kind of came out of nowhere you know something like that I mean, uh, as far as other things in horror movies go, uh, I would say that a good soundtrack goes a long way. Oh yeah, and that goes oh. all the way back to like, um, like Psycho. Like the the soundtrack of Psycho was so uh, amazing, and ever since then, yeah, like having that, you you need something that's off putting. That's not like it needs to be a little bit wrong, if if you know what I mean. But also like kind of catchy, like. Uh, Halloween kind of has that. Um, mm. Psycho definitely has that. Um, yeah, it's and there's some tropes that get overplayed in in horror movie soundtracks and stuff. But um, I thought The Ring had a decent soundtrack too, especially like the intro and outro scenes. Yeah. All, all right. Well, we talked a lot about horror films. I mean, it's a big topic. There's, I, I assume. We'll, we'll definitely break some down and like as some come out we'll kind of talk about them yeah as, we'll, as they come out we'll talk about them as as yeah you know, like kind of like we did with venom we um, did with venom yeah I, I would also i think we're going to start to do some episodes too where we uh we get together and we watch some movies that we know maybe aren't the best and kind of uh do a little critiquing um that's always fun that's kind of uh back with my my group back when I really got into film, that's what we did a lot of. We watched bad movies and talked about them. And obviously there's a lot of groups online that do that, but that's always a blast. You know, you just sit there and watch pure incompetence right. and uh, makes you feel good about yourself. Cause you're like, Hey, I could make movies then. Cause I wouldn't have done any of these. I wouldn't have made any of these choices. Right. Uh, oh. On the I other side of the you. spectrum and we don't have time to talk about it. Maybe we'll talk about it later, but on the other side of the spectrum, a movie that I do recommend is the exorcism of Emily Rose. Ooh, yeah, I that's think a that was one. a very solid. That's a, yeah. I we don't have time to talk about it. And honestly, it's been a couple of years since I've seen it. I would have to rewatch it to talk I about did, it. But I, I remember that, film. that that had some very creepy imagery. I had a buddy in high school when I saw it who like literally, um, he was he was pretty hardcore Catholic and he literally was like almost in tears. Like it, it psychologically damaged him. It was a creepy um, Those movie. are the best type. Um, yeah. I mean, the yeah when, you, when, you see, when you see a movie that like destroys one of your friends and you're like, yeah, this is pretty good. Yeah. The exorcist itself still holds up pretty well too. My whole horror movie thing lately is snacks tells me, go see this one. And I go see it. I usually don't yeah. even, I know yeah. he watches them all. I, I so watch he them recommends all one, I watch and it. And I, I love them. This is like 
probably probably my favorite genre of movie. Um, but uh, I mine's mean, a not, hardcore pornography. That's not I was gonna say. I, I thought that'd be. Yeah, horror movies are up there though. They're probably third after like it goes hardcore pornography, science fiction, um, and then horror. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> Um, <laughs> horror games. Have anybody played any horror games? Anybody? Uh, horror games? Yeah. Uh, Bioshock Silent, count? Silent Hill. Bioshock absolutely counts. Bioshock yeah. is a great yeah. example of a horror game because it's so atmospheric. It's all yeah, it's about rapture a, and being good isolated. Atmosphere, and horror atmosphere. Surrounded by monsters. But I like um, it because it's a good, was... like, uh, like, it's got good action in it, too. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty decent shooter on top of it. No, no, Bioshock was popular for a reason. I think it was like the third highest selling game on Xbox the year it came out. Um, it was really good. I read the novel uh, that talks about like the building of Rapture and all that. And um, it was, that was pretty interesting and how everything fell apart and like um, the economics of it and the social issues that kind of destroyed the city. Um, and then uh, Dead, Dead Space is decent. Dead yeah. Space was a decent I would say the, the first one, at least. I yeah. didn't care for it falls, two. It's not I great after the three. first one, but... Yeah, I didn't play three either. I played one and two. Yeah. Um, um, I bought I bought Amnesia, and I bought Alien Isolation for Fox, and he has yet to play either one of them. I actually I've heard started playing, playing Amnesia. Isolation was really good. I've had a lot it of people free. recommend that to me. Isn't that VR now? I, I would have I to play so. that on my I VR. Think is, I think yeah. it is VR now. And uh, it's probably even more terrifying. Oh yeah, VR VR excels at horror. Games <laughs> Resident Evil it's... Seven is uh, yeah, tell me about terrifying it. in uh, in VR. Um, I I didn't even know that was VR. It, yeah, is, well, is it's the whole game, or is it just like well, no? It's it's only VR right now on uh, on PlayStation VR. Um, I hate when they do that. They should just bring it out for Steam. Supposedly they're they're working. They're gonna eventually release a vr version of it for pc but as of right now it's just ps4 okay well yeah i'm always looking for more stuff to do in vr because i absolutely love it and it's i think it's the future of gaming i, I play a lot of like flight games because that really is perfect for it but horror is really good too because like just having all that right in your face and just kind of like you know creeping behind you and stuff and um, with the stereo sound and the and the goggles is amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and and you don't have to like move quick. It, like the thing where VR is a little difficult right now is like running and gunning, first person shooting. But if you do uh, if you do VR, that's a little bit slower paced. Like Resident Evil is usually a little slower paced. You know, yeah. that really is perfect for it. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, other than that, I don't really know much that's on the horizon. Yeah. There's this new game that just came out. It's called like. Visage or something. Visage. I guess it kind of visage, V I S A G E. I guess it kind of plays like PT. I was oh. watching a little bit before. Um, I will head class today because I was, was bored. <laughs> Let me see. But, if I look at it here. Very positive reviews. First person psychological horror game. Yeah, it sounds it sounds very much like PT. Yeah. It's an early access. Okay. Huh. Maybe I'll give it a shot because it does look really creepy. Yeah. Uh, I was watching it in like the first five minutes of it or kind of freaky and i wasn't even playing the game so yeah maybe i'll uh, maybe i'll stream it maybe oh so that everybody can have to scream like a girl oh i'll i'll make sure i'm recording it oh good so i can t i can make a gif of it oh, um <laughs> yeah so uh but other than that that's that's pretty much it um anybody have any closing thoughts I think Counter Strike with Kevin is my favorite kind of horror. Uh, is it? Is it? Is it your best kind of horror? It's it's, it's, Dude, it's terrifying. To we should we should make movies. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sparks? Uh, any closing thoughts on uh, horror genre? Yeah, I mean, I think we, I think we covered a lot tonight. I mean, there's you could do this 
five times in a row and still have right. a million films to talk about. I mean, normally we talk about one particular film, but you know, it being October and stuff, we wanted to kind of just cover the whole genre. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think horror is definitely one of those things where when it's good, you know, it when you see it and you know, it's just like porn. there's just like porn and it's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of intellectual, like you can say a lot of things about this is what works and this doesn't, but you know, if it, it's kind of connects to you on a, on a different level. Cause it kind of, and it's such a weird thing to watch. It's such a strange thing to do. It'd be like, I'm going to watch this with the goal of being frightened, you know? And, uh, that's what kind of separates it from a lot of other things. Like, cause okay. Being excited. That's one thing like, you know, being interested, but I think watching something with the goal of being terrified is a strange thing. It's like getting on a roller coaster, which I also love. It's like, why do we do it? I don't know. It's just one of those strange things people do. Right. Well, I mean, I guess, uh, I guess that kind of wraps things up. Red rum. Red rum. <laughs> Red rum. Excellent, Red excellent, rum. Excellent contribution, Web. All right. Well, with that, uh, thank you all for listening. And uh... that's murder backwards. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Web, did you ever eat paint chips as a kid? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Anyways, with that, we're going to end. Uh, Thanks for listening, and tune in next week. Uh, We'll see everybody then.